So hey guys, I got a package in the mail today. I got a pretty good idea what it is. About three weeks ago I ordered a rip and chain. Been going back and forth with this company trying to figure out the status. Sounds like they were out of stock. They ended up having to order a, another roll of, of rip and chain and then uh, make it up to the number of driver links I needed and send it out. So I, I believe it's finally showed up. We'll open this up. We'll do a little comparison against uh, a normal cross cut um, full chisel chain that I often run when going out and cutting firewood. And, um, and then I got a little bit of time here, so I'll, I'll try to get a, a few boards uh, cut and milled and, and try to progress along in this project a little bit. So let's get into it. So the one on the left side here is the ripping chain, the new ripping chain. This is a normal cross cut, you know, full chisel chain that I run. And one thing you'll notice right off the bat is just the angle of the teeth here. This one's cut at more of a 30 degree angle. And this one is uh, at a 10 degree angle. And then one other thing that's quite noticeable is just look at the width of the teeth here. Right here. And see how they're the same, you know, same width, pretty much go all the way across the chain. However, on the ripping chain, if we slide it up just a little bit, they have what they call scoring teeth. If you look how skinny, so they alternate, they, you know, scoring tooth, scoring tooth, and then they have what it's called a clearing tooth. So there's two things I wanted to, I guess, bring up real quick. If you're thinking about getting a ripping chain, it didn't really occur to me until this thing was sitting out here on the bench. But uh, of course, uh, those clearing teeth for me is a, a 10 degree angle. And I'm a guy that sharpens my chains by hand. I always have, I probably always will. And to this day, I still use a file guide. If you're not very familiar with what a file guide is, it's basically uh, something that goes on your file and will show you the angle. So when you're filing, you always know that you're filing at the correct angle. And since the common uh, kind of cut angle is either 25 or 30 degrees, that's what's on my guide. However, there's nothing in there for zero or, or 10 degrees. So I'll have to take a look online, see if there's something out there that uh, shows me that 10 degrees so I can make sure I stay uh, consistent when I file that. Then the other thing is, is the raker guides. Uh, normal chainsaw chain that I use is uh, 0 0.025 for the, the depth. And with this new chain, it is uh, zero or 0 0.010, I believe it is. So I'm gonna have to look at another depth gauge. If you're not very familiar with what a depth gauge is, basically you have teeth on a, a chain and then you have these, these guides. And these, the guides sit just a little bit lower than the tooth so that tooth doesn't take too big of a bite when, you, when you're cutting wood. I mean, think about if you had a, a chisel or something, it's easier to just shave off small chunks uh, instead of just trying to die, you know, drive that chisel all the way you know, through a two by four or just stick. So those guides are put on there. And then of course you wanna run that as efficient. You don't wanna take off too much where your, your saw you know, sticks, but you wanna be as efficient as possible. So for my chains, it's uh, at 0 0.025. I think that's the case for most chainsaw chains. Don't quote me on that. So a lot of times what you do is you take one of these file guides and if you look, there's a little hole and you put that raker right on through there and you rest this uh, these inside parts right on top of the teeth and it sets the height perfect for you and all you gotta do is just file it away. So since mine is at the incorrect um, depth for this, that's another thing I'll have to take. So, so I just wanted to point those two things out before I, I get into cutting. It's already getting a little late here. So I, I wanna do a, a couple slabs off of this uh, log here and then I'm gonna just gonna run a few of these boards through the old table saw and probably call it a night, so.
I wanted to wrap up this video real quick with my final thoughts on the ripping chain. I was uh, pretty pleased with it. I felt like I didn't have to muscle the saw around quite as much. When I was running a full chisel chain, uh, it would just bite a lot harder and, and grip in there where this ripping chain just seemed to slide through it a lot better. It had very nice clean cuts off the first few runs that I did off it and then they seemed to get a little bit more rough and I don't know if that's because the chain's getting duller or maybe it's my technique, you know, I'm kind of new to this stuff. But um, yeah, I was, I was quite pleased. The chain, you know, I paid $30 for the chain. Normally I order a lot of my chains off eBay. I know my chain size. These guys go out and they buy big rolls and they build them to whatever I need. I know I need 81 drive links for the bar that I'm running right now with this. And and I get chains for, I don't know, 15, 20 dollars or something. So on a good day, it's double the price. On, you know, Otherwise it's about $10 more. I think most people probably pay closer to $30 if you go down to a hardware store or something and buy them. So it depends on where you buy your chains and how tight you are on money. But I, I think, I mean, just for safety reasons, I think running a ripping chain is a good idea. It just, it, it didn't seem to bite as hard. It was just easier to control the saw. So one reason I wanted to do this project and start off with something small is to get an idea on how much work it is involved in doing something like this. Me and my wife have been talking about uh, kind of redesigning our our garden and incorporating our chickens into it a little bit more. We're basically talking about uh, penning off two kind of gardens, basically having two gardens and then one year the chickens go into one garden kind of as a run and then the next year we move them to the other one so they kind of fertilize. So with that we've been talking about building a chicken coop and, and I'm trying to get an idea on how much work it would be involved to mill enough wood to build that coop and the way it's been going right now that's going to be a pretty big time consuming project I guess. I was amazed at just how much time to spend on getting the saw set up and ready and, and you know you're getting boards you know your start board all leveled out and then you got to spend time sharpening and gassing up and it's just, it's just a, a slow moving process. So it's been a very fun project so far, but it's uh, definitely been a little eye opening on um, how much work is, is involved in milling your own lumber with a, a chainsaw mill and stuff. So anyways, enough of me rambling here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.